During the naturalization interview, you will be asked up to 10 questions. To pass the test, you must answer correctly at least six of the questions. In this video, we will learn the civics questions in a logical and historical order. Reviewing the questions in this manner will help you learn the answers faster and remember them better. The answers to the questions are displayed in yellow. Christopher Columbus came to America, the New World, in 1492. The people who lived in America before Europeans arrived were the American Indians, the Native Americans. They lived in many places in different groups called tribes. Some of the tribes were Cherokee, Navajo, Sioux, Chippewa, Choctaw, Pueblo, Apache, Iroquois, Creek, Blackfeet, Seminole, Cheyenne, Arawak, Shawnee, Mohegan, Huron, Oneida, Lakota, Crow, Teton, Hopi, Inui. Colonists from Great Britain and other European countries settled in the eastern part of what is now the United States. At first, they formed small villages and towns. Slowly, the population grew and spread further inland. Great Britain governed the area which we now refer to as the 13 colonies. In Europe in the 1500s and later years, there were not many liberties or freedoms or economic opportunities for people to advance and live a comfortable life. Because of this, many people, which we call settlers or colonists, came to the New World. Some settled in South America, the Caribbean islands, and some settled in North America, what we now know as Canada and the United States. Colonists came to America to get freedom, political liberty, economic opportunity, practice their religion, escape persecution. After the war between the colonists and Great Britain, these 13 colonies formed the first 13 American states. The 13 original states were New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. On July 4, 1776, representatives from 13 British colonies in North America signed a paper called the Declaration of Independence. This document stated that the 13 colonies were no longer colonies of England and that they were free and independent. The Declaration of Independence was written by Thomas Jefferson. Years later, Thomas Jefferson became a president of the United States. The Declaration of Independence was adopted on July 4, 1776. Two rights in the Declaration of Independence are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Declaration of Independence 
announced our independence from Great Britain, declared our independence from Great Britain, said that the United States is free from Great Britain. The colonists fought the British because of high taxes, taxation without representation, because the British army stayed in their houses, boarding, quartering, because they didn't have self-government. Some colonists protested by dumping English tea into the Boston Harbor. Great Britain did not agree with the colonists trying to be independent from Great Britain. The American Revolutionary War was a result of Britain trying to recapture the colonies. The father of our country is George Washington. He led the Revolutionary Army against Great Britain. He also became the first president of the United States. The first president was George Washington. In 1787, representatives from the 13 colonies wrote the Constitution. Soon after that, they added 10 changes to the Constitution. These changes are called amendments to the Constitution. The Constitution was written in 1787. At the Constitutional Convention, the Constitution was written. The Founding Fathers wrote the Constitution. The Federalist Papers supported passage of the Constitution. The writers of the Federalist Papers were James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, John Jay, Publius. Publius was the name used by the three writers of the 85 papers that make up the Federalist Papers. Because there was disagreement as to what the Constitution should contain, some people proposed that the original Constitution should be changed or enlarged. They proposed changes, which we call amendments, to the Constitution. An amendment is a change to the Constitution. An amendment is an addition to the Constitution. We call the first 10 amendments to the Constitution the Bill of Rights. The Constitution and the amendments say many things, including that all people have equal rights and that the government is elected by the people. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. The Constitution sets up the government. The Constitution defines the government. The Constitution protects basic rights of Americans. One freedom guaranteed us by the Constitution is freedom of religion. Freedom of religion means that you can practice any religion or not practice a religion. The idea of self-government is in the first three words of the Constitution. These three words are we the people. The First Amendment guarantees certain rights or freedoms. One right or freedom from the First Amendment is speech, religion, assembly, press, petition the government.
in the United States, we agree that we must live by the rule of law. The rule of law means that everyone must follow the law. Leaders must follow the law. No one is above the law. As the years passed, more amendments were added to the Constitution. Today, the Constitution has 27 amendments. Under the Constitution, some powers belong to the federal government. These powers are to print money, to declare war, to create an army, to make treaties. Under the Constitution, some powers belong to the states. These powers are to provide schooling and education, provide protection, police, provide safety, fire departments, give a driver's license, approve zoning and land use. There are four amendments to the Constitution about who can vote. Citizens 18 and older can vote. You don't have to pay a poll tax to vote. Any citizen, man or woman, can vote. A male citizen of any race can vote. To make sure that no person or agency has too much power, our government is divided into three parts or branches. The three branches of our government are Congress, Legislative, President, Executive, the Courts, Judicial. The checks and balances or separation of powers among the three branches stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful. The president is in charge of the executive branch of government. The president is elected for four years. We elect the president in the month of November. The president is commander in chief of the military. The president signs bills to become laws. The president can veto bills and stop them from becoming law. The president appoints people to help him run the government. The top people become part of his cabinet. The president's cabinet advises the president. The following are cabinet level positions. Secretary of Agriculture, Secretary of Commerce, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Education, Secretary of Energy, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Secretary of Homeland Security, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Secretary of the Interior, Secretary of Labor, Secretary of State, Secretary of Transportation, Secretary of the Treasury, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Attorney General, Vice President. The name of the President of the United States now, as of January 20, 2017, is Donald J. Trump. The name of the Vice President now, as of January 20, 2017, is Michael Richard Pence. 
if the president can no longer serve, the vice president becomes president. If both the president and the vice president can no longer serve, the Speaker of the House becomes president. The judicial branch reviews laws, explains laws, resolves disputes, disagreements, decides if a law goes against the Constitution. There are nine justices on the Supreme Court. The Chief Justice of the United States is John G. Roberts, Jr. The two parts of the U.S. Congress are the Senate and the House of Representatives. Federal laws are made by Congress, Senate and House of Representatives, also known as the U.S. or National Legislature. There are 100 U.S. Senators. U.S. Senators represent all the people of their state. U.S. Senators are elected for six years. The House of Representatives has 435 voting members. U.S. Representatives are elected for two years. Some states have more representatives than other states because of their state's population, because they have more people, because some states have more people. In 1803, the United States bought from France the Louisiana Territory. Louisiana. As the years passed, more states were added to the United States of America. Some disagreed about such things as slavery. Africans, people from Africa, were taken to America and sold as slaves. The U.S. war between the North and the South is called the Civil War the war between the states. Problems that led to the Civil War were slavery, economic reasons, states' rights. The Civil War lasted from 1861 to 1865. During the Civil War, the president was Abraham Lincoln. The Emancipation Proclamation was issued by President Lincoln. It freed the slaves, freed slaves in Confederate states, freed slaves in the Confederacy, freed slaves in most southern states. President Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves Emancipation Proclamation saved or preserved the Union led the United States during the Civil War. In the 1800s, the United States fought several wars. The War of 1812, the Mexican-American War, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War. During the First World War, the president was Woodrow Wilson. During the Great Depression and World War II, the president was Franklin Roosevelt. During World War II, the United States fought Japan, Italy, Germany.
During World War II, Eisenhower was a general. During the Cold War, the main concern of the United States was communism. During our history, there were many leaders trying to improve our country. Martin Luther King fought for civil rights, worked for equality of all Americans. The Civil Rights Movement Tried to End Discrimination On September 11, 2001, terrorists attacked the United States. Benjamin Franklin is famous for being a U.S. diplomat, the oldest member of the Constitutional Convention, first Postmaster General of the United States, writer of Poor Richard's Almanac, and for starting the first free libraries. Susan B. Anthony fought for women's rights, fought for civil rights. The two major political parties in the United States are the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. The political party of the president now, Donald J. Trump, is the Republican Party. The name of the Speaker of the House of Representatives now is Paul Ryan. A responsibility of an American citizen is to vote in a federal election, serve on a jury. A right of an American citizen is to vote in a federal election, run for federal office. A citizen must be 18 or older to vote for president. One promise you make when you become a United States citizen is give up loyalty to other countries, defend the Constitution and laws of the United States, obey the laws of the United States, serve in the U.S. military if needed, serve, do important work for the nation if needed, be loyal to the United States. We show loyalty to the flag when we say the Pledge of Allegiance. Two ways that Americans can participate in their democracy are vote, join a political party, help with a campaign, join a civic group, join a community group, give an elected official your opinion on an issue, call senators and representatives, publicly support or oppose an issue or policy, run for office, write to a newspaper. The last day to send in a federal tax return is April 15. All men must register for the Selective Service at age 18. In the United States, we believe in freedom to conduct business. The economic system in the United States is a capitalist economy, a market economy. The following four questions relate to your state. If you are not sure of the answers, the information is on the following websites.
who is one of your state's U.S. Senators now? Answers will vary. District of Columbia residents and residents of U.S. territories should answer that D.C. or territory where applicant lives has no U.S. Senators. Name your U.S. representative. Answers will vary. Residents of territories with non-voting delegates or resident commissioners may provide the name of the delegate or commissioner. Also acceptable is any statement that the territory has no voting representatives in Congress. Who is the governor of your state now? Answers will vary. District of Columbia residents should answer that D.C. does not have a governor. What is the capital of your state? Answers will vary. District of Columbia residents should answer that D.C. is not a state and does not have a capital. Residents of U.S. territories should name the capital of the territory. Name one of the two longest rivers in the United States. Missouri River, Mississippi River. What ocean is on the west coast of the United States? Pacific Ocean. What ocean is on the east coast of the United States? Atlantic Ocean. Name one U.S. territory. Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, American Samoa, Northern Mariana Islands, Guam. Name one state that borders Canada. Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Minnesota, North Dakota, Montana, Idaho, Washington, Alaska. Name one state that borders Mexico. California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. What is the capital of the United States? Washington, D.C. Where is the Statue of Liberty? New York Harbor, Liberty Island, New Jersey, near New York City, and on the Hudson River. Why does the flag have 13 stripes? Because there were 13 original colonies, because the stripes represent the original colonies. Why does the flag have 50 stars? Because there is one star for each state, because each star represents a state, because there are 50 states. What is the name of the national anthem? The Star Spangled Banner. When do we celebrate Independence Day? July 4. Name two national U.S. holidays. New Year's Day. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. 
President's Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas. To learn more about this book and other citizenship books, click on the link found in the video description section below. Good luck!